Hey, it's Brian again with the Stone Trust, and I'm here with uh, Lori Sullivan, and we're splitting up some granite blocks. So we're going to take a look at what we're doing here today. All right, so we're working on a big granite block. Uh, Lori Sullivan came to a workshop a couple years ago and mentioned that she had a granite quarry on her property. And these are some of the blocks left from the old quarry. Um, and uh, we've got a big block here that we drilled, and we're going to split it with feathers and wedges. And take a look at what we're doing here we're using uh, the three quarter inch size feather and wedges and in this case we actually did drill a three quarter inch hole so you can see what it looks like usually we use more like an 11 16 hole for uh, this size because um, these do sink in a little bit low but it looks like it's gonna work okay and you can see that we drilled we drilled this on three sides of the rock because this is such a big rock and uh, you can also notice it's supported. It's actually just the way it's sitting here, uh, it's overhanging. So it's gonna split pretty well, we hope. So we're gonna get the rest of these feathers and wedges in and uh, we'll see how it splits. All right, so here we go, we're starting to tap these in. You can see the three quarter inch ones sit pretty deep in there right from the beginning. In a way that's good because it means that the, the spreading force is, is uh, deep in the stone. The disadvantage is you don't have as much movement outward uh, pressure as you pound the wedge in because it just doesn't have as far to go. Okay, so if you're ever in a situation where you're feather and wedging a stone and you get the feathers and wedges pounded all the way in and the rock doesn't break, what do you do? There's a couple things. Sometimes if your holes were drilled deep enough, you can use a tool like this. This is a carbide one, which is not ideal. Um, it's better to just use a steel, but you can set that on, strike the back. You can drive that wedge in a little bit farther that way than you could otherwise. Um, so sometimes that'll be enough. If it's still stuck and the rock still hasn't split, you can keep trying by using uh, the stone busters or quarry buster striking in a line trying to give additional relief probably that won't help if the feather and wedges didn't even have a crack started um so then you've got a couple hundred dollars of feather and wedges stuck in there <laughs> and at this point we just want them to get out um you can drill another hole between each one of these preferably if you have it go to the next bigger size feather and wedge so if this is three quarters go up to a seven eighths or a one inch and put those in and start driving those in so you get even more pressure. But most often, people don't have more feathers and wedges. So you can drill a hole immediately to the side of the feather, just slightly angling in. You're trying not to actually hit it, but be right near it. And if you need to, you can do to both sides. And then by just tapping sideways on that, it'll kind of break the rock right around the feather and wedge and you can get them back out. Um, and at that point, then you can go to splitting a different rock that actually will split. Okay. See, we've got a crack started. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Not the straightest of cracks, but it's cracked. It's cracked right down this side. As you're close, we've got a crack started. As it's getting close, we're listening to the feathers and wedges. They're still going to be tight, and then they're going to, at some point, the sound's just going to dull right out. Hear that different sound. Oh, oh it's it just cracked all the way. Yeah, down. it's cracking. Oh, it's cracked. Oh, it's gone. The weight of it's pulling it apart right now. Now, are these loose? Okay, these are loose. Carefully, let's. <laughs> there it goes. I can't really have that happen. Hey, that's a nice cut. Look, Look at that. Far better than any of the other sides on that rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really clean break, actually. So with splitting this rock. Um, 
one of the things that it brings up is that the feathering wedges always work best when they're we're in the center of the stone. If you get close out to the edge like this, it's gonna spall off a chunk. It's not gonna split right down through the rock. If you're in the center third of the stone, which we're right on the edge of here, generally speaking, it's probably gonna work pretty well. You're gonna have to test the stone that you have. It varies a little bit. The closer you are to the center, the better it's gonna work. In order to split a small piece, you can split in half, then a half again, then a half again, Kind of a fairly typical setup for me where we've got two blocks that are getting split right now. Two more have been drilled. We're working a whole bunch at the same time so that while you're waiting for one, you can be working another stone. And so you're always busy. Three quarter inch feathering wedges in a five eighths inch hole. They look something like this when they start out up nice and high. You don't have to drill the hole quite as deep because it's never gonna get that wedge all the way in. So that's why the feathers are sticking up a little bit high. We only drilled the hole about three and a half inches deep with the five eighths inch diameter hole and the three quarter inch feathering wedges. Yeah, you can just see the cracks starting to form. Right there. And I have this up on, an, on bars underneath kind of. It's not the best setup, but goes. <laughs> you can see the crack forming down the side now. There it is. Looks like that cracked pretty well. All right, there's that block cracked. Nice straight crack again. Just four feathers and wedges in the top. By supporting it underneath, it just cracked right in the right spot. Oh, miss it. There we go. Four blocks split. <laughs> 